Good evening. I want to read to you from today's Love Your Neighbor, No Exceptions flip calendar from January 20th. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. That's a passage of scripture from 1 Peter uh, chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. Now, it's important to remember that the letter of 1 Peter was written to the early church people, helping them understand that they were called to be different in Christ. Now, this was important, and we don't want to lose the context, uh, the setting of this letter, because that highlights the difference. Um, they were different before they came to know Christ, and now they were taken from darkness into light. Now, it was important for P this letter to uh, point that out because the differences that Christ promised in life were far different than other religions at that time were promising. In that time, there were a multitude of gods in the Roman world. Each had its own temple, uh, its own statue of the god, and they would have their own priest and or priestesses, their own practices of worship, of how to make sacrificial or, uh, gifts to that pagan god. And although the practices might be uh, different from God to God, uh, the intent was basically the same. You were making some sort of gift, a pledge, an offering, uh, something that you had that you could give to appease the God, to win the God over to your side so that that God would bless you in some way. For example, if you were a farmer and you were preparing for harvest, you would go make a gift to the gods uh, over the rain, the, the earth, all the gods of fertility to win them over so that everything would be lined out and your harvest would be successful. If at the end of it all, you had a great harvest, you knew that your gifts to those gods, false gods, but uh, those people didn't understand that. They thought they were giving these gifts to gods. The gods were pleased with their gift, and that was the reason for their successful harvest. If, however, you were the farmer that you made your dutiful gift to the gods, and right before harvest happened, there was a huge hailstorm that wiped out your entire crop, you would know that either your gift hadn't been sufficient to please the God, or something had happened and uh, you had angered the God. Either way, the God was not on your side and uh, that's the reason you had no crop. And so anybody in society that had uh, riches, wealth, uh, good health in life, all the things uh, that make life happy, um, people understood that they were blessed by the gods. And people who were down on their luck, people who had health problems, uh, people who just circumstances in the world uh, hit them particularly harshly, were seen as cursed by the gods. And so you had all the more reason to look up to the wealthy and powerful and to look down on the poor and lowly uh, because it was seen as the judgment of the gods. So consider how different it was uh, for the early church because they were told that God loved them um, and the gifts they were to make were to be about blessing the lives of others, not necessarily to have blessings in their own life, 
it's a natural response that we would all like life to be better than worse. But following Christ, the difference is that your life might not be incredibly wealthy and powerful and you have wonderful health. The blessing is the relationship you have with Christ, with God. And so it's a far different before and after picture than other religions presented at that time. They would present, if you do this, if you follow this God faithfully and give the, the right gifts, then you will be blessed in your crops, in your family, in your position in life. Christ was saying, if you follow me, your life will be blessed. It doesn't look like those blessings. The blessing you receive is being connected um, in this family of faith, connected with God and the assurance, that inward assurance and peace and joy you find knowing that you are truly loved by God. And so you hear these passages because uh, this letter is to say, yes, you went from darkness to light. You are different now, not because your crops came in, but because uh, now you know without a doubt that God loves you. And so that explains this, this last passage that can kind of come off a little confusing. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. It wasn't that God didn't love them before. God didn't show them mercy. It's almost as if you were blind to the mercy that God had for you. But now that you've gone from darkness to light, you have received it. You've been able to accept it. And so remember that nothing you've ever done or will ever do can separate you from the love of God. And God has that love not just for you, but for all people. Whether or not they recognize it or accept it, God has mercy and grace for all people. It saddens me to hear different faith groups focus more on what they believe God hates than on what we know God loves. We know God loves all humanity, all people, no exceptions. Remember, God loves you without exception. And so live your life as a new creation, confident in the love that God has for you because that love has been shown in the fullest in the life in death and the resurrection of Christ our Savior. Remember today, you are loved forever and ever. Have a great night.